Hear me and rejoice, for we have finally completed the children of Thanos. Don't you mean Thanos? Thanos. Thanos? Thanos. 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 That's it. Pete. Pete. That's right. Pete. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Review. Tonight, I'm taking a look at the Hasbro Marvel Legends Avengers Endgame Series 1. If you watch my mail booty from, what was it, last week? I got all of these from Hasbro, except for Living Laser here. I went to my local Walmart this morning, found him. I was happy I got halfway to the register and realized somebody stole the Thanos piece. You, sir, can burn in hell! There's a special ring of hell for you bastards that steal parts out of $20 action figures. But since I got all these at the same time, I'm going to take a look at them all at the same time. You get some MC you figures where do you go there's Ronan and then you get some comic figures with this and then there and then there and then there so let's go through and see what's going on with this wave first up let's take a look at the time heist suit Captain America he doesn't come with a Thanos piece so he seems just kind of stuck on to this wave. I hate to say that I'm sure it's a nice figure but <laughs> he's first okay looking at the sculpt itself it's very nicely done I'm not doing side by side to try to see if this is exactly accurate to the movie, but the sculpt here evokes that look for me at what I remember from the movie. But you'll definitely notice the color here. Hasbro has the distinct disadvantage of wanting to have action figures on the shelves when the movie hits. So they're working with concept art, they're working with preliminary sketches and what it was meant to look like when they first started. And I guarantee the movie studios gave them this gray color because Hasbro went all in with the gray on all the characters they made in this costume. But then we get to the movie and we see that it's actually a stark white and I can imagine Dwight and Ryan looking at that trailer and going well shit and I actually think this figure would have benefited from being in white it, it kind of looks armory it kind of looks kind of plain like this a stark white would have stood out on the shelf and I already see people talking about skipping this because of how much this was featured not or well not featured in the movie but overall it's a nice add to the shelf especially for people that dig on armor I'm not quite sure he was shown in this costume with the helmet on like this. I remember this costume being like nanobot or nan nanotechnology like Iron Man has where it just disappears and it goes to the costume underneath or it changed into the costume they wanted it to change into. I don't know how that works. But I think they did this just because, hey, it's Captain America, he's in this suit go for it. But I'm not quite sure if this is a reuse head from something else. I'd like to see this. If this is the head from that original Avengers movie Captain America costume, at one, the blue is a little bit darker than it should be, but two, it's a nice sculpt. It actually looks like Cap under the helmet. Easy enough to pop off because of the ball joint here. And I just happen to have a clean shaven Chris Evans head from Casting Cave to go on here. It's a little bit big for this, but I think this is the same body used in the Hawkeye set, and I'm sure we may see it somewhere else for Iron Man. Well, Iron Man comes in that set too. Hasbro wants us to use this same body all the way across the board, and I don't think it's quite wide enough for this custom head. But articulation-wise, there's a hinge in the neck going up to a ball in the head. He can bury his chin. He can look up. Not a lot of tilt. Swivel, arm up to there, rotates all the way around, swivel at the bicep, double elbow, most of the way up, hinge, swivel, hinge in the torso, ba-boom, back, swivel at the waist, hip up, hip back, hip out, swivel at the thigh, can kick his own ass, hinge at the ankle, back, forward, and then forward facing pin for rocker. And to keep the figure from being too plain, this grid pattern is pretty cool in the black parts. For accessories, he comes with his shield. It's movie style. It has these extra lines in the star. On the back, you have the straps. I think we've seen this a couple of times, but it's not a bad shield at all. In fact, I kind of like it because it just straps. Get your hand on there. Ah, there we go. Through. And once you get it on there, it's Captain America. He needs his shield. Ding, 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 ding. For comparison, here he is with some of the past Captain Americas from the movies. And as you can see, this figure is a little bit smaller than those. I feel like he should be a little bit taller, a little bit broader, but at the same time, like I said, Hasbro may be using this, or well, is probably using this for all the characters in this suit. So they went with a more generic size to fit in Ant-Man and Iron Man and Hawkeye, and they need to redo the first Avengers Captain America body because the feet on this thing suck. Next up, let's take a look at Nighthawk. And no big surprises here with Nighthawk, except for how... <laughs> cumbersome this cape is cumbersome it's your standard bucky cap body it's got the details for the costume just painted on but it is nicely applied the edges are sharp it's not really fuzzy anywhere 
I'm not sure if we've seen these hands with these claws before. They look a bit Wolverine-ish, but they're not Wolverine, much shorter claws. And then the head is also new with this sculpted wing look right here. I feel like you can't really reuse this for anything else though, which is not a bad thing. Hey, Nighthawk gets an individual head sculpt. You can't go wrong with that. And it looks like mine got scuffy on the nose in the packaging. Maybe they stuck it in there when the paint was still wet. I don't know. Wait, there is a paint chip right there dead center of the chest, but you kind of miss it because of the shadow of the pegs. Oh wait, is there a peg in the bag? Look at that. Does that go in there? Okay, that does plug in and it becomes a little bit less flyy, outy, all aroundy. And it's definitely not Hawk's cape, it's just a hard candy shell. It's not gonna do anything but just stand there. So you try to get into action poses and it acts like a kickstand, which is okay, but you're not gonna get the cape out of the way. It's always gonna be right there while the peg tries to come out because it's got some tension to it. It's actually stretching the cape a little bit up here at the neck to stay in the peg hole. But I hate it much less with it pegged in like that. Definite detents to the shoulders though. I don't remember those being that heavy. And you come unpegged again, didn't you? Get your... For the sake of articulation, go away cape. Hinge of the neck with the ball going up into the head, can bury the chin, can look up pretty nice. Not a lot of tilt because the head is too constrictive right there. Swivel, arm up, it almost seems like they've done something to the shoulder to kind of uh, fight the age of this body. So everything's nice and tight right here, but it's almost too tight. Clicky around, bicep swivel, double elbow most of the way up. Hinge seems to be stuck at the wrist. What's this one do? This one's nice and smooth. Okay, maybe paint, maybe a little plastic, but now it's loose, swivels. Hinge in the torso, forward, back, swivel at the waist, hip all the way up, back, out, not so great. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee comes most of the way up. Can't quite reach. Swivel at the boot. Yar, buccaneer boots. Hinge at the ankle back. Forward, forward facing pin. As far as accessories for Nighthawk himself, he doesn't come with any except for this just wonderful freaking cape. And I know I'm giving it a hard time mostly because it won't do what I want it to do. But once it's pegged in there and he's standing on the shelf, uh, does he stand? Oh, that's a lot of weight on the back. Oh, you son of a bitch. Came out again. There we go. Stay. Oh, I found a balance point. He's leaning forward, but it works. For comparison, here he is with the Marvel Legends comic Black Panther. Same body used here. He loses just a little bit of height. I think it's in the boots. Next, to hell with it. Let's look at Ronan. And Ronan is a pretty damn nifty sculpt. I'll admit I like this look from the movie. I'll admit I like this look from the comics too. And as far as comic to movie goes, they did a pretty nice job of translating it here. Sure, it's not perfect with the parka look up here, but it's close enough. Excellent sculpt work here on the bracers. Same thing with the shin guards down here. I'm not sure if this is meant to be shoulder pads or just part of the parka up here, but it works as shoulder pads. Again, going back to that comic look. I know I keep saying that, but it just makes me giddy how close this is. Now you'll notice the hood is up and it does look good. It looks like it's sitting on his head, but it's actually a separate piece, which is even better. I mean, yeah, it doesn't snap on. It kind of holds onto the collar right there but it looks good with it on, it looks good with it off. You don't get that a lot. The head sculpt is more of the black, more of the gold, but you do see the eyes punched in here and they look fairly nice. Looks just like Jeremy Renner, doesn't it? You see this nice texture inside the gold right here and as far as the gold goes, it's pretty much the only paint on the body. It's nicely applied from what I can see. Now you also get this separate strap piece coming around the torso. For some reason, there's several holes up under there where you can peg in, I guess to make it tighter, tighter, tighter it's tight enough as is really. I don't know what the extra holes are for. Also, it almost feels like this is upside down. It has the cut part on the top and that's to hold his swords. He has a long sword, nice techie detail to it right here. The handle's kind of squared off. I'm not quite sure if that's accurate to the movie, but it works for what I remember. In fact, in the movie, wasn't there cutouts right here? But with this being plastic, with this being scaled down, I can see why they didn't do that. Plus, maybe this is the concept art again. And you also get a shorter sword to go with that. I don't remember him using a shorter sword, but again, I've only seen it once. I need to go back and watch it again. And it almost feels like you're supposed to put both of them back here. I should have probably watched other people's review on this before I just haphazardly go at it. But do they both go in there? Yeah, kind of but I don't want to do that. Going over articulation, there is a hinge with the ball going up in the head. A little bit of tilt, can bury the chin, looks up, swivel, arm cups up, nice ratcheting to that, swivels around, 
detents heavy on that. Bicep swivel, double elbow most of the way, some hinge, some swivel. Now I have seen people point out the torso joint in here, but with this jacket, the way it is, it's just one big overlay heavy piece. Oh, oh, there is a split to it. Well, hell, let's take this off. Take this off. Pop the head. Watch me never be able to get this back on once I get this off. Get the overlay off. You can see there is an ab joint forward and back. There is a waist swivel, but with that on there, you couldn't really move it. And I've seen people cut across the belt right here, split it apart. I don't know if I'll do that. I like the seamless look, I guess. But if I'm not mistaken, this torso is featured later in the movie in his other costume. But the hips come forward, hip back, out, hey, 45, okay. Swivel at the thigh, double knee, bow, all the way up. Hinge the ankle back, forward, and then forward facing pin for some rocker. But it seems to be angled down a little bit so you get more of a twist than a rock. I don't have the Target 2 pack of Clint and Black Widow in their time heist suits, but that comes with an unmasked head. I wonder what that would look like on here. Not too bad to get the parka back on though. Not as <laughs> bad as I thought it was going to be. I mentioned the swords. The hands are kind of stiff. The swords are a little bit floppy, kind of difficult to get them in the hands, but once you do, he's definitely holding on to them for the rest of our lives at least. And that just looks kind of badass. Ooh, oop, forgot to put a strap back on. There you go, even more badass. Here he is with an older Marvel Legends Hawkeye and then the Marvel Legends Infinity War Black Widow. This one's in dire need of being redone, but these two together look pretty good. Oh, well, hell, I forgot about his throwing star hand. As we know, Jeremy Renner is a lefty, so he would be throwing with his left hand. And I think we saw something like this with Bullseye. Did he have the throwing knives? We also see it with Gambit, which I haven't received yet. And this works in a throwing capacity, but I think he's going this way with it because it would be further distance throwing like that it's a normal well left-handed throwing star I, yeah kind of that backwards so that works and i'm not going to complain about nice little extras like this that you don't even have to use also i went back to put the hood back on and i was like wait what happened this does not look good at all don't put his face out the neck hole let's take a quick look at living laser is that focused Oh, well. Also, that's some amazing packaging art right there. That's with the electricity. And looking at Living Laser, I was going to say all reuse, but it looks like we have new shoulder pads here with some kind of... Is the sculpt on there or is that just painted? Never mind, that's just painted. <laughs> Good job, Hasbro. You had me fooled there for a second. Oh, well, there's these two. Is that from Spider-Man 2099? I don't think I have that figure. But we've seen the body before, but it's in translucent pink this time around, and that right there makes me just happy as hell to have this action figure. I don't know. There's something to it. Looking at it in the lens of the camera right here, it doesn't look as bright and exciting as it does in person but it is still a cool effect for this character would i have liked to seen the classic living laser well yeah I'm, I'm a fan of the classic stuff i have no attachment to this look for living laser but it makes for an exciting action figure the white lightning running up the arm to this kind of faded out white that gets more solid as you get to the center of the body. It's not as good as we saw on the prototype, but not bad for factory work, I think. And then the only other paint apps are these circles on the shoulders that I thought were actually sculpted. That's how nicely they are painted. And then getting up to the head, this is new, obviously. This is what Living Laser looks like. You would think that those eyes are really high up. It makes me think this is the chin and this is a really long neck, but it's actually kind of proportionate if you take into account the neck coming up to about right here, the chin being right, well, I don't know. It looks odd. I'm not gonna try to justify it, but at the same time, it's a pink translucent dude with a helmet on like that. I can live with a little out of proportion to the neck and head. And even looking as oddball as that looks, there is just a slight forward and back and a slight swivel. So they didn't kill all articulation there. But this body really makes me want some UFOs. Going over articulation, like I said, at the neck, not a lot there, but it does move. You have the butterfly joints to the shoulders here, forward, back, nice range of movement, actually. That comes out to a hinge and swivel at the shoulder, comes up, swivels around, swivel at the bicep. Double elbow, not as nice as we see with a lot of other Marvel Legends. They just didn't cut out enough of the bicep there to give it good range at the top of that joint. Hinge. Swivel, hinge, swivel. Ball at the hip comes all the way forward, back, 
out, not that great. Swivel at the thigh, double knee, not quite. Hinge back at the ankle, hinge forward, and forward facing pin for rocker. He also comes with these two electric energy effects. Very, very soft plastic here. It just goes any which direction you want it to go. I think we've actually seen these before, but I'm not gonna complain because it works with the whole motif of this living laser. And with the butterfly shoulders, you can get him into some cool poses with that electricity. <laughs> For comparison, here he is with the Marvel Legends comic book Black Panther and Iron Man. Looks a little bit small compared to the Iron Man, but I'm going to say it totally works. It's an energy dude with a weird metal helmet. It, it works. Next, here is Citizen V. Big fan of Thunderbolts back in the day, so this, yeah, I'm digging on this. Getting it out of the package, I knew this was reuse from... Uh, that black costume daredevil with the arm wraps and the boots with the laces on it But you'll notice I thought oh no, I got the wrong leg, but the laces are on the back It's an easy fix. You just twist it around bring the foot around there you go <laughs> not as bad as i th initially thought but like i said reuse from that daredevil i'm not sure about this wrappy belt though thing but if it's into the motif of the wrapped arms the boots it just works overall and as much as i bitched and complained about nighthawk's cape citizen v's cape does about the same thing it gets in the way it doesn't really do much it looks dynamic but it actually stays in place for whatever reason. I haven't had a problem with the pin coming out in the back and then the cape just flopping around. Plus, I really like how it's laying over this arm right here. Sure, it gets in the way of articulation. You're not going to be able to bring this arm up again with the heavy detents in the shoulder. Yeah, that looks oddball. So most of the time he's just going to be standing there like this. But damn it, that cape just looks fantastic. I think I would prefer cloth though. That way you can put it anywhere you want. But the overall look of Citizen V just screams, well... Citizen V. Even the face. I remember back in the Thunderbolts days, I would look at this and go, how the hell does he see out of this? And then I remembered, spoilers, this is Baron Zemo. He usually wore cloth, or well, had cloth glued to his face anyway. Or was that the original one? I don't know. Either way, this being who it is, it's fantastic getting an action figure of him. I can't even pull the pin out. I was going to go over articulation. Oh, well, okay, there you go. That does unplug, but it holds much better than the Nighthawk. Hinge at the neck, going up to a ball in the head. Bury the chin. Looks up very, very nicely. Not a lot of tilt. Swivel. Hinge up. Same thing as Nighthawk. Kind of tight. Well, this one doesn't detent as much. No clicky clickies. Swivel. Double elbow. Hinge. Swivel. Hinge. Swivel. Ball hip forward. Back out swivel <laughs> does it kind of feel like i'm going over the same body at least three or four times during this review double knee not quite all the way up swivel at the boot hinge back hinge forward forward facing pin for rocker for accessories citizen v comes with this cool ass sword it's kind of a curved blade to it it's got this ridge down the middle has the guard on the grip i don't think we've seen this and if we have i will deny i ever said that in the package it was rubber banded to the hand but i haven't had a problem with it coming out of the hand and then i think with this strap being like it is on the belt wrap whatever you can do it like this if you want to plug the cape back in hope it goes back in as tight as it was out of the package Oh yeah, once you get that on there, that stays. Why can't the other one be like that? Also stands much easier than Nighthawk because the cape isn't so far off the body. Center of gravity is much more normal here. For comparison, here he is with the Marvel Legends Baron Zemo and the Marvel Legends Songbird. Citizen V is taller than here, but they share the same body. I think it's, again, in the Buccaneer boots. And over here, we need more Thunderbolts, Hasbro. And then... Ebony Maw. And as always, Hasbro knocks a movie figure out of the park. With Ebony Maw, they kind of had the advantage this time around of him appearing in Infinity War. So they actually had a finalized look to go by before getting to Endgame. And I'm not going to comment on how accurate this is to the movie, but again, this makes me think of Ebony Maw in the movie, so that's good enough for me. It has nice crisp detailing to the sculpt up here. And then again, like Captain America, I, and I'm not sure if this is in the movie or not, but it's a nice to see it on. It's a nice Nice to see it on the action figure. This extra detail work here in the pl what could have been plain parts to the figure. The wraps here at the arm, the gold breaking up, the gray and the darker gray. Very, very soft lower skirt piece here, which is always appreciated. It gets out of the way of articulation, I'm down. And then just the continued look all the way down to the legs and feet. Now when it comes to Ebony Maw himself, you can see they sculpted hair here, but in the movie, it feels like it's a little bit more 
out. It gives them kind of a crazier look. This is a very alien, don't get me wrong, it, but it seems like there's something missing. Even though they did a nice job with the paint wash to bring out the detail of here, and then the eyes themselves, it's kind of hard to see, and I'll probably look at this and edit and go, oh, there is detail to the eyes, but in person, it just looks like shiny gray. And one thing missing that I wish they had added was an extra hand with the shh. I guess that kind of works, but not quite. For articulation, there is a hinge at the top of the neck going to a ball in the head. And because of this sculpted high parts on the side, you do get some tilt here. But you bury the chin, does look up, swivel. My arm hinges out. The shoulder's a little bit tight. The arm is a little bit thin, so be careful when you're pushing on that. Swivels around. Swivel at the bicep. That really breaks up the sculpt there. Double elbow. Oh, you can't get better than that unless it goes through itself and around to the back. That is as good as it gets right there. Swivel. Hinge. Nice ball joint in the torso. Tilt, tilt, forward, back, just all around. Like I said, very soft skirt piece. Leg comes all the way up. Back. Out, better than some Avengers. Swivel at the thigh there. Big old double knee. I, I, for some reason, I feel like this leg is really, really thick. But I'm okay with that because it's a bigger body. We'll look at that here in a second. Not quite. Oh, bing. Hinge at the ankle all the way back. Not a lot of forward though. And then forward facing pin for Rocker. No accessories except for maybe his groveling pompous attitude. And you can't see that in the package. You have to add that yourself. Hear me and rejoice. That totally works too right there. But we finally get to do this, and this is what I've been looking forward to for over a year now. Sure, Corvus Glaive and Ebony Maw is a little bit more accurate to the movie than Proxima Midnight and Cull Obsidian. And even Proxima is pretty close. Cull Obsidian is the one that veers way out from the movie look. But as kind of a concept Black Order or half and half comic looks or whatever you want to use it for, I like how these all look together. In fact, looking at these three, the grays used, it's it's very just, hey, we're part of a team. It's Cull Obsidian that stands out a little bit, not having his shirt. And did he have pants in the movie? If he had the clothing and he had the color on the clothing, it would be much more cohesive all the way across. But as it stands, here's a group of badasses. But to give you an idea of how big and oddly proportioned he actually is, here he is with the Marvel Legends Scarlet Witch and the Marvel Legends Bucky from Infinity War. He's tall, he's lithe, he's out of proportion, he's very alien looking. He looks right. And then as far as opening packages goes, here is Hercules. And oh man, Hercules. I saved him for last for a reason. I knew with all new sculpt, he'd be something special. Well, we see that with movie figures, but as far as comic figures go, we don't see that a lot. But he's an all new sculpt. It looks fantastic. It looks amazing. I can't say enough good things about this figure, except for maybe this strap thing, but we'll get to that. Sure, it's a modern look for Hercules, but man, does it call back to a lot of that classic Marvel look for Hercules. The browns, the greens, the orange, that is definitely classic Hercules. This belt buckle right here, it seems like I've seen that before, way back in the day. He has these bracers that are actually separate pieces. I had them turned wrong on the side, but bring it around again. That's some ancient Greece stuff right there. No, I'm not a historian. I'm just making that up. Go with me. And sure, he doesn't have the leg wraps that he had way back in the day. But again, this kind of calls back to that with this different colored brown right here coming down. Some straps, just some cool stuff going on down here. He doesn't have the open toe sandals, but again, it's kind of Hercules. The hair painted on the chest, because <laughs> he's a manly man. I wish that kind of continued on down the arm though, just to match it all up. But then up at the head, he has this headgear thing that again, calls back to kind of his whatever he used to wear. And I think a lot of people have a problem with this man bun. But I think, you know, even though I don't know this modern era Hercules, reading him back in the day, I feel like the natural progression of Hercules would be this. Verily, forsooth, bring me some mead, some winches, and a man bun. <laughs> He's just a party top guy to the point where he annoyed other people with it. And you know what? He just annoyed some of you with that man bun. So it's Hercules. Now this strap right here likes to ride up and kind of stick out and get in the way. That's mostly because the belt isn't glued down. It's still floating. When I pull this down tight and put the crotch guard over his actual crotch, it brings this down tight right here and gets out of the way of his head. So I have a feeling this is definitely going to get glued because as you move it around, this rides up and gets annoying. Going over articulation, there is a hinge at the neck, a big old hinge. Look at that thing. Ball going up into the head and they left enough room for some tilt 
He can bury his chin. He can look way up. Swivel. From promotional shots, because of the shape of the shoulder, we kind of thought this was going to be a butterfly joint, but it's not. It's just a big honking shoulder. I kind of like how it doesn't break when it comes up. It's almost like the muscle is stretching to meet the shoulder, but at the same time, you can't get it up to 90. But you can fake it by coming around and there and coming and swiveling around. Swivel at the bicep. Double elbow, but big honking bicep, so that gets in the way. Swivel. Hinge, deep crunch at the hinge in the torso, nice arc back, swivel at the waist, ball coming out to the hip, nice forward, back, out, 45, I don't know, why are they having such a problem with hips? Swivel at the thigh, double knee, because of the sculpt right here, the baggy pants look, the wrinkles and such, not getting up all the way, but pretty good for a big guy. Swivel at the boot, makes me think they're going to reuse this at some point, hinge back, Hinge forward, forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, look at that, he's just a cocky looking bastard. For accessories, he comes with two fists. Those pop out and can be replaced with grippy hands. Be careful when you pop these off. Like I said, the bracers are a separate piece. So if those go flying off, bye bye. And he comes with grip hands on both sides for this awesome looking sword. It's seen some damage, it's seen some battle. It's got some dings and nicks in it, and the nice gold paint down here. And then he also has a mace. And this looks a little bit plain only because there's some wrap right here that I feel should be a different color. And because of the extra sculpt here, the paint kind of lacks, suffers. This looks cool though. And he can either hold those in his hand, no problem at all, or he comes with places to store them on his back. The mace goes there, the sword goes here. And you know what? I can't be too mad at that strap, even though it keeps riding up like that. If it holds his weapons, hey, I got no complaints about that. A little bit tight though, getting the mace out of the right there. For comparison, here he is with the Marvel Legends Black Panther and Colossus. So pretty big figure, but not huge figure like Colossus. Because here he is with one of the older, bigger bodies, Gladiator and then Wonder Man. So he's about as big as the Hyperion, the Luke Cage, but a better proportioned, I feel like. And then all those figures, well, except Captain America, come with parts and pieces to build armored Thanos from Endgame. And that should just snap together. Oh, it kind of looks like that armor piece is going to get in the way of this one. Snap, arm in, didn't really snap, but it feels secure. Again, I don't have any side-by-sides to show if this is exactly accurate, but it evokes what I think of when I think of in-game Thanos. Nice sculpt to the armor, the overall look, the helmet, it hides the head. I've seen guys hollow this helmet out or well, heat it up and pull it off and then use the head from the three pack because of the skin tone and make a helmetless Thanos. The skin tone is lighter than the last Thanos Build-A-Figure we got, but again, the Hasbro was able to go back to Infinity War and get the skin tone from that. Not the softest material on this piece hanging down, but it does get out of the way of articulation. The whole gold armor look all the way down to the boot. I always think of Thanos as big feet. I don't know why they're always showing his feet in the movies, just walking along. Now you will notice he has the Infinity Gauntlet, and if you have seen Endgame, Spoiler alert, he doesn't actually wear this gauntlet with this costume. So again, Hasbro gets kind of screwed over with concept art or preliminary drawings or whatever. But to be fair, Bandai did the same thing. They put this gauntlet on this version of the figure because they wanted to get it out at the time of the movie release. So maybe like with that three pack we saw from Hasbro that corrected the skin tone, gave them some different heads, maybe we'll see another armored Thanos down the road that doesn't have this Infinity Gauntlet, actually has the armored look on both sides, or has the correct Infinity Gauntlet from Endgame on the right side. Still, overall look, Thanos in armor, pretty badass. This armor piece right here is actually a softer piece glued on. Also, they did something interesting with the elbow here, whereas it's one long pin piece in the middle. But because of that, they could put a hinge and swivel at the elbow and still give it a decent range for a big guy. But going over articulation, hinge at the neck going up to a ball. Nice tilt, not bad. It does shift forward so you can get the chin down, looks up. Hinge and swivel at the shoulder, comes up, swivels around, but that isn't as soft as it probably should be. So the arm goes out kind of when you rotate it around. Hinge and swivel at the elbow comes up to about 90, then swivels. Up and down hinge on the wrist. Well, the left side's side to side hinge, then swivels. Hinge at the torso comes forward, back. Hip comes up, back, out. Swivel at the thigh, nicely hidden by this armor piece right here. Double knee. Oh, hinge at the ankle, not a lot of range there because the armor coming down over it. Oh, and no rocker. That's weird. They have side to side action above the joint. So 
doesn't tilt. And then for accessories, Thanos comes with his helicopter blade weapon, whatever it is. Doesn't quite look like the movie, and I don't think it's quite as big as it should be. I seem to remember the movie having more of a point to it because he takes his helmet off, puts it on top of that, and it sits. But this... It works for what it needs to be. And that goes in his hand. Looks good for a toy. For comparison, here he is with last year's Build-A-Figure Thanos and then the SH Figure Arts Thanos from Infinity War. Like I said, Hasbro was able to get the skin tone a lot closer to the movie and to the Figure Arts than they did on the first Thanos. But they did a good job of making it look like the same dude in two different suits. Well, in the suit that's under this, however that works. But then here he is with the Marvel Select comic Thanos and the other Marvel Legends comic Thanos. But I'm really liking the look of this. So at the end of the day, a, a pretty good wave. It helps that I'm hyped up on Avengers Endgame right now. I've seen it once, I'm gonna see it again at the theater at least one more time. So getting more MCU characters from that movie Mmm, action figure form. But also the comic characters. Citizen V, nice addition to that shelf along with Hercules. I don't even care if it's the modern version. Yes, I would like a classic version eventually, but this will do me on the Hercules front for now. Movie Ronin, oh, mwah, delicious. I love this figure. Sure, it's not as agile as I would like it to be, and I've seen people do fixes to it, but for now, standing on the shelf, amazing. The build figure Thanos isn't quite accurate, but he'll do. Same goes for Cap. I... I the suit didn't show up a lot in the movie, and the kind of dull gray instead of the bright white, bright white, is a little bit disappointing, but at the same time, right now Hasbro has most of the team in action figure form. Ebony Maw, mmm, yes, finishing up the Black Order, awesome. Hopefully they'll come with a Cull Obsidian that's more movie accurate later. But as is, completing a team, I'm not gonna complain about that. Living Laser, another nice addition to the comic book shelf. I like the look here, sure. I would like the classic, just like Hercules, just like a bunch of the modern figures we get. I would like the classic, but this will do me just fine. It's a bright pink translucent action figure on the shelf. And then Nighthawk, yeah, whatever. He, he's cool, he'll go with whatever team I've add him to. But that cape is just, it's maddening. It's kind of frustrating. But it looks right, and it works for the character. So I, I, it's a toss up. Overall, I'm glad to get this wave. It's more figures for the shelf. <laughs> yeah. Feed the addiction, baby. So if you like the review, comment, like, subscribe. I can't show them the foosh.